Let's ready? get moving here, everybody set. We ready to go? Coming up today, more movement, better memory. See the program that's empowering people living with dementia and Alzheimer's. Plus the exercises we all can do to help protect our brain health. Good morning, I'm Jessica Lovell and welcome to the Morning Medical Update. Well, we all know that exercise is good for our health, but did you know that that also includes our brain health? There is a well-established connection between exercise and memory. And if your memory starts to decline, it is definitely time to get moving. And that is the idea behind a certain exercise class happening out at the University of Kansas Health Systems Sports Medicine and Performance Center in Overland Park. Janine Kiesling takes us there. Determined and Positive, or DAP. It's a fitness class that brings together individuals with mild cognitive impairment, early dementia, and Alzheimer's. Might seem like a straightforward exercise program, but it's blossomed into something much more profound. The ripple effects of this class extend far beyond the participants, creating a community rich in support and camaraderie. This has really been helpful. When we first started all of this, I, I anticipated, oh yeah, it's another thing where I get to go, he's doing something, I am waiting patiently. Yet with research highlighting the benefits of regular physical activity for those with cognitive challenges, skipping DAP wasn't an option. We'll start here with some shoulder rolls. At the heart of this initiative is the Sports Medicine and Performance Center at the University of Kansas Health System, which partnered with industry leaders to create a specialized fitness class for individuals like Mike. Keeps me moving. I'm 82 now, and it keeps me going and keeps me where I can move. I think it's really great. I think uh, I come every twice a week. For these men, fitness transcends physical activity. It's fostered friendships that have transformed their experience. It's a good group. We all uh, can cuss at each other if we wanted to, but we don't. It's all a nice people. The connection among the participants enhances their workouts, but the impact on caregivers is equally remarkable. I didn't realize I was going to be getting help too. Right. <laughs> For Sue, DAP has become more than a fitness class. It's a vital lifeline. I'm not coming for Mike, I'm coming for me. This and the interaction that we all have, sometimes we're really talking about serious things that are going on and we can be supportive of each other. Sometimes it is off the wall, ridiculous, and we're just giggling like a bunch of middle schoolers. <laughs> That's something I really loved going out there is that those those caregivers really having a place to to go and unwind, if you will. So it was, it was really, really cool. And we're going to learn more a lot, a lot more about this class and what it means for those patients and the caregivers from Dr. Jeff Burns. Always glad to have you with us. Great to be back. Across the table from us, we have Michelle Needens. Dr. Burns is a memory care specialist and co-director of the University of Kansas Alzheimer's Disease Research Center, or ADRC. Michelle is a licensed clinical social worker and director of the Cognitive Care Network, an initiative that supports um, educating patients, loved ones, caregivers. So good to have you, Michelle, with us as well. And we are also speaking live with fitness training instructor, Joey Mitchell, who we just saw in that video piece. Uh, he is joining us live from the Sports Medicine and Performance Center out in Overland Park. Good morning, how are you? Good morning. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you this morning. Um, so most people understand um, how exercise helps our overall health, but Dr. Burns, just really explain the connection between exercise and specifically our brain health. Yeah, so as you say, we know exercise has a big impact on our body. You know, it strengthens our mu muscles, it, it strengthens our bones and, and our heart and lung function as well. And we know something about that also translates into brain benefits. So this is something we've been studying for 15, 20 years here at the University of Kansas Alzheimer's Disease Research Center, um, really trying to understand how can we use exercise to promote brain health. But lots of things that sort of link sort of the body's health with brain health. And you've maybe heard the phrase, what's good for the heart is good for the brain. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, a little exercise never hurt anyone, but um, we're going to talk more about this today because it's really interesting. And there's a part of the, the brain that's called the, the hippocampus. Am I saying that right? Hippocampus. Yep. So connect the dots for us between memory and the hippocampus and movement. Yeah, well, so the hippocampus is a part of the brain that's responsible for short-term memory. 
So it takes new information and puts it into the long-term uh, memory bank. So um, and this is a part of the brain that's also hit early in Alzheimer's disease. Um, what's special about the hippocampus is it, it's a part of the brain that can, uh, that can generate new neurons. Um, and we're, under, we're beginning to understand what can drive that sort of new, new brain cell production in the brain. Um, and one of the things that stimulates, stimulates that and that sort of birth of new neurons in the brain is exercise. Um, and so this is something that's a, a big area of interest and something we're trying to actually really prove and understand is that, yeah, when we exercise, we can sort of boost the health of the hippocampus because we can drive that sort of new neuron production through exercise. Um, and so something that's potentially very relevant to Alzheimer's disease. Um, so if we can use exercise to really improve the health of the hippocampus, an area hit hard early in Alzheimer's disease, you know, that could potentially translate into, into some real benefits. Any certain kind of exercise that's best? Yeah, Cardio, we, weight training, or yeah. is all of it good? <clears throat> well, we think all of it's good, but we are trying to understand that which one is best. We have a big study right now where we're, we're comparing and contrasting and combining aerobic or you know cardio exercise with weight training exercise, resistance exercise. So, um, so we re we need to, we need a, a little more research to truly understand that, but um, it's all good. The most evidence exists for the cardio oh, exercise. I was afraid you were going yeah. to say that. <laughs> yeah, that's where the most evidence right. uh, exists. You know, if we improve our heart and lung function, we think that uh, is important for translating into the brain benefits. Makes sense. So, but generally speaking, we know. Okay, as you're saying, movement helps memory. But can you get more specific? Are we talking about a number of steps, a number of days, minutes of exercise, and each time? Yeah. So that big, that's the big question. Uh, a big question we get is how much is enough? How much should I be doing? And um, you know, really, the the sort of the old rule of thumb you hear: uh, some is better than none, but more is better. Holds true. Um, you know, the good news is going from nothing to something is your biggest bang for your buck. So do something. Uh, how much is enough? Doing something is better than none. So I'd say focus on getting started if you're not exercising. But um, you hear things like 10,000 steps. You hear 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity exercise. These are the things that we, you know, prescribe and we tell people that's a good goal. But it's not necessary to get there to get the benefits of exercise. Those are good goals. Um, but you know, doing something is better than nothing. Yeah, and just get started get with started. something. And of course, it goes without saying, uh, we shouldn't wait for a diagnosis before we start exercising. Michelle, you speak with people living with cognitive problems. Um, you speak with their loved ones. Um, when you talk with them, how do you talk to them about exercise when it comes to encouraging them to get started and, and where to start? Well, in a couple of different places. So uh, especially for those with MCI, early diagnosis, they really want an action plan. So exercise and movement is part of the action plan uh, with, along with other things. But even throughout a big chunk of the disease, we think we're structured people. Um, we need some structure to our day. Um, we need some element of productivity, uh, whether that be at MCI stage or through, as long as someone's able to, to walk and move. Uh, and so really looking at how do we build a schedule, what I call uh, the rainbow schedule, which is just a diverse schedule of let's look at the physicality, let's look at the work piece, let's look at volunteerism, let's look at hobbies, let's look at socialization, and let's construct a schedule that have, have all those pieces in them. Um, so we talk a lot about let's move, let's action, that's part of this entire, uh, what I would consider balanced schedule, let's replicate life, uh, which has not one piece, but many pieces. Well, I like what you're saying. It's not one size fits all, and everybody has a diff comes to the table with a different level of, yeah. of exercise history and what they've been doing, and then different activities that fill up their time. So I love that you're trying to incorporate it so that they actually want to do it and stick with the schedule. Um, in your experience, um, do you find that some people self-isolate after an Alzheimer's diagnosis and maybe lose their, their social support? from time to time? I, you know, depression risk is high. Uh, the, inclin the natural inclination to start protecting oneself from exposure of deficits is high for many people, not all. Um, and those things start provoking a retreat uh, from activities and people that they would have been in. And also as there become some challenges and what we consider performance anxiety. 
um, can, can be a problem. So building that structure and doing things, all those things make a difference in combating those. And as I mentioned at the top, just one of the cool things that we see in the, in the video piece was the caretakers meeting um, off to the side while their loved ones are, are exercising and doing their thing. Michelle, why is it important for them to connect with one another? What are they, re other than just kind of hanging out, um, it seems to make sense, but what can they really be getting from this particular connection? Well, we think differently, right, when we're talking to strangers and others and when, we th when we're talking with families. We certainly think differently than when we're engaging with others than when we are sitting watching television all day. So our brain works different, for one thing, but the other piece is it combats that, that element of depression and that uh, inclination to lower self-confidence. Uh, when we say, gosh, there's a lot of people like me, I can connect with others, I'm not alone, then some of those uh, emotional pieces, I always say here's the cognitive piece, here's the emotional piece. Mm -hmm. And you know, addressing some of those emotional components uh, is vital, and we see that in DAP. Um, uh, some of those fellas are, are open and talk a lot about their, their memory issues, there are those who don't. Uh, there are those that are inclined to things like early stage support group. There are those that don't. So th uh, sometimes fitness, the, the DAP fitness, is the support group mm -hmm. for a set of people. Uh, and, and that's a beautiful thing. Blending those two people, those two types of people together, those who are kind of out there and about there and some who are kind of maybe in the beginning stages of their journey and don't really know where to start socially. So I love that. And I did notice that when I was out there. That's why I want to go out uh, to the Sports Medicine and Performance Center. Joey Mitchell, um, hello and good morning again. Uh, just on a personal level, I saw you interacting with those guys and they're, they're so fun and so interesting. Um, what's it like for you personally just working with those guys in the DAP program? It has been the most amazing experience. Um, you know, a lot of the guys have been in the class for two years now. I've gotten to know them really, really well. Um, they're just a blast to have out here. They're always cracking us up and they're always just so grateful. Um, so working with them has just been the most amazing experience. Well, they were fun. And let's just, let's just be really honest. They told us we might be better off taping a piece with them because if we were to go live with them, one never knows what they might say because <laughs> they're kind of fun and they're just, they're a little spicy. And, and I caught that. That was great. I loved seeing that. Was it just a coincidence that it was all men or can women join the group or is there a separate group for just women? That was completely coincidence. You know, with this population, we do have m mostly men in the class, but we absolutely have women in there. Um, just happened to be that day, it happened to be the guys' party, I guess. But women are welcome and um, can join this class at any time, right? Absolutely, yes. All right, we want to show some video of the different exercises that you, you do in class, and I want you to explain them what you're doing and most importantly, why you're doing it. So let's start off um, pretty simple. It looks like you're kind of doing a mix of stretching and some basic balance work. Um, so what are you doing here to start the class off? Yeah, so right here is part of our dynamic warm up. We're just working on getting muscles activated, getting the blood flowing. Um, and then with that single stand balance, uh, we're working on a little bit of balance there as well. All right, I want to show- Here you'll I see guess, us kind of go through some yeah. more stretches. working on getting, like I said, getting those muscles activated, getting the shoulders warmed up before we pick the weights up. Um, and you'll see they're in a tandem stance there. So working on some balance and then we get the weights out. Things get a little bit heavier. Um, we get the legs going um, and we kind of get the heart rates going as well. Good, I know you worked it pretty hard. So this looked fun though, the bowling part. Um, they're bowling with the medicine ball. Um, how do the ball rolls help? What are they trying to do here? So it's a, a, a lot of things there. They're working on hinging or squatting to pick that medicine ball up. Um, they're getting their heart rates going by rolling it back and forth over and over again. Um, and most importantly, they're just having fun together. They're, get, they're getting to work together and play a game and um, kind of have that social aspect of things. And then finally, we see the guys walking a line. They're doing their the heels to toe, kind of looks like a roadside sobriety test. Um, the walking is important. They're walking forward in the beginning, and then you have the guys walk backwards. Um, why is just the simple movement of walking so important? And then why backwards? 
Um, so obviously balance is so important in, in fall prevention, injury prevention, um, and then doing it backwards kind of gets your eyes out of the picture. Um, it forces you to trust where those feet are going since you can't necessarily see where they're at. Um, so it's just a good challenge for them. So with DAP, you have a beginner class, you have an advanced class. Uh, the video that we're seeing, which is that? Is that is the one the class that so we that, saw? Is that? Yeah, that the class that you saw there was the advanced class. You could say um, we also have that beginner class. It's largely the same class. Excuse me, um, just a little bit different flavor, a little bit different speed to things. All right, be sure to ask your questions. You can use the chat on YouTube or Facebook. You can email the Medical News Network. The information is there on your screen. So Joey, we're, we're showing video, but let's do a little demonstration. Um, can you lead us maybe in a workout? And um, we're, we're kind of wired up, but we're gonna try to play along a little bit. So, um, so if you're seated, kind of <laughs> tell us what to do. and We'll try to follow along. Yeah, so one of the things we try to work on is dual tasking, so working on multiple things at once. We aren't necessarily great at dual tasking, so it's a good challenge. Um, starting off with one that we do seated, um, we'll put both hands out. We'll start tapping one finger at a time down to your thumb, getting your brain locked in on that. And then as you are working through that, I want you to start marching those knees back and forth, making sure both movements are happening at the same time. It, doing it, doing it. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, we're working on some dual tasking there. Um, and then we're also just working on getting those hip flexors going, getting those legs moving, um, and hopefully getting those heart rates up just a little bit. Okay, I was hard, it was hard to coordinate the lift of the knee and I was like kind of doing it. So I get that like that, something that seems simple, but dual tasking can kind of be something you have to think about. Okay, what's next? So the next one we'll work on is one we use in our warm up a lot and then also at the end. It's a good mobility drill. Um, so I'll have you sit up nice and tall with your backs away from the back of your chair if you can. We'll stick both hands straight out front and then we're going to reach as far as you can following that hand with your eyes. Okay. We'll go back to center and then around the other way. Again, this one we're working on some thoracic mobility. That stretch. Feels good. It does feel good. We're kind of like, this is a good for the morning. This is good for all of us. I like it. Get things warmed up, get things loosened up. So Joey? Joey, can you hear me okay? Yes. So why is it just... Yes. Why, so is this good for just anybody? Why is, are things like this just good for any of us daily to just do these simple movements and maybe even just get in the habit of doing it? Absolutely, the more you practice moving your body, the more regular it is. Um, and you know, as we age, it's important to keep playing with our body and moving around and practicing those motions. Um, so that way we can move throughout our whole life. Yeah, just motions you're not used to day to day. Appreciate that. Hey, Joey, um, if someone wants to learn more about the DAP exercise class, what do they do? Where do they go? Absolutely. So Michelle is a great resource to get to get connected out here. You can also just come out to our facility. Um, we start off with a free assessment, so you get to come out, you get to meet us, you get to uh, meet the staff that you're working with, you get to see the facility. Um, so that's always the first step: is just reaching out to us, coming out to our facility, um, and meeting us. Joey, thanks so much. Stick around. We'll get back with you here in just a moment. Michelle, what would you say to someone who might be concerned about their memory but also is hesitant to start working out? So if they've got a, a cognitive disorder and they're hesitant to step into a program, again, I think it's uh, proactively addressing some of that, what I consider to be performance anxiety, just reassuring them these, you know, the, the trainers are great, there are programs, uh, you know, uh, various programs that understand, um, and uh, there is no risk of failure here. And that that movement can help, not only physically, as Dr. Burns talked about, but also mentally. Uh, in terms of the, the depression and uh, uh, really building some of that schedule. So, you know, everything in life is a risk-benefit profile. 
And in this case, the pros so far outweigh the risks uh, and to talk about that and process that. Dr. Burns, we focused on exercise. What else can we be doing um, to uh, be proactive and to protect our brain health? Yeah, so I mean, exercise is important, but things like diet and sleep and socializing and um, structure in your day, these are all things that are, are important as well. So, um, and when people ask about diet, you know, we, we, we preach the Mediterranean diet, which is, uh, there's a lot of data to suggest that it, it's, it's good for you and it's maybe good for your brain. So, um, so if you're interested in shifting your diet pattern from say the Western, typical Western diet, you can shift it to a Mediterranean diet pattern where you know, more vegetables, healthy fats like avocado and um, olive oil, um, you know, less uh, white breads and sweets and uh, you know, more fruits and vegetables. So, um, so that's, a, that's, a, that's something we're also studying and I think that's something that can have an impact as well. I wanna to get to some questions from our viewers this morning because we've got several coming in. And I wanna, um, Joan says, I would think an exercise program would be beneficial for caregivers. Um, could you, maybe Michelle, I'll ask you that question. I mean, how important would it be to have that camaraderie? We see the little ladies sitting around out there um, visiting, but what about making sure our caregivers are also taking care of themselves physically? Yeah, that's, a, that's important too, is finding ways for care partners uh, to be uh, engaged. Uh, so it, it's very beneficial to have that social connection uh, that they have with DAP, which as Joey said, or as, as uh, uh, was mentioned before, it was accidental mm -hmm. uh, in terms of that camaraderie with the care partners. So I think that's very, very important. Uh, but yes, physical activity is important. Let's get you know, care partners walking and maybe walking with their loved one with cognitive impairment, but also uh, getting to classes, et cetera. Hey, Joey, Rob wants to know, is there a fee for the DAP program? There is a fee. So we do it on a package base. Um, you buy either 10, pa uh, 10 classes or 20 classes at a time. It breaks down to be, I believe, $16 a class. Um, and then you just use them as you come. We don't charge you if you aren't here. People ask that a lot. Um, we only charge you when you're here. We don't ask any questions if you aren't. We hope to see you the next time. Great. Hey, Marshall wants to know, would there ever be any classes like this that might be available to people via telehealth? Maybe for folks who don't have the transportation or the means to get there. Absolutely, yeah. So we don't offer that right now, but we do offer virtual training options. So we would be happy to help you out. If you aren't able to come uh, out to our facility physically, um, we always have options for you and we'd be happy to work something out for you. Jeremy also has a question, Joey. Lots of questions for you this morning. Do you see less fall injuries from the folks who come and participate in these types of programs regularly? Yes, we do. So we have some uh, members of the class who come in and, you know, they were working out in other facilities and they come in and say, look, I fell at my other gym or whatever it may be. Um, and then through what uh, they work on in class here, they um, become a little bit more balanced. They come a little, become a little bit more confident in their feet um, and they have this safe opportunity to challenge themselves in that in that manner. Dr. Burns, Yanni Ling wants to know, is it possible for mild Alzheimer's patients to slow down brain atrophy through exercise? Furthermore, could exercise help restore a mildly um, atrophied brain to its pre-diseased condition? Mm, good question. So uh, there is a little evidence that, that exercise may slow down that, that shrinkage of the brain that we could see with Alzheimer's disease. Can we restore the brain? Uh, not, not to its previous you know, level, probably not, but, but we do think that something about exercise, you know, the vascular benefits or uh, the metabolic influence it has may have an impact on the brain and the shrinkage of the brain. All right, what do you know about this? Would encouraging a friend with Alzheimer's to go hiking in the mountains help slow their brain degeneration and improve um, motor coordination. Do the oxygen and negative ions in the mountain environment benefit Alzheimer's patients in these aspects? Mm, so like the high altitude. Yeah, sounds yeah. Like, uh, um, maybe. maybe. I mean, there's also risk there. Uh, Good mountain air never hurt anybody, yeah, right? Yeah. So we gotta, we gotta weigh the risks and benefits there, but uh, yeah, possibly. What about, um, Amy wants to know, what about any new Alzheimer's drugs? Where are we at with that? What's on the horizon? 
Okay, well, that's a big question. Let's and, get after it. There's two new drugs that are out and available that we're prescribing now for people with mild, real, in the mild stages of Alzheimer's. So it's a really important time in the, in the fight against Alzheimer's. We've got these two new drugs um, that have hit the market and we're working out how do we identify the right patients, it's not for everybody, uh, and then how do we give them in a safe and reliable way where we can monitor for the side effects that we wor that we worry about that can occur with these drugs. So, yeah, there's it's a new it's a new era for Alzheimer's disease. I what I was telling you before we started the show, it's good to have you here in studio because every time we see you, I always think of you kind of in this lab working with your doors shut and really getting getting down to it and discovering something mm. really exciting. So, what is exciting you when it comes to the work you're doing? Well, I mean that's that's one of them. We've been you know working for 20 years with our in our group here, um, and working you know with others all around the country and all around the world with on these new drugs, and they're now here, um, and so that's a big deal. They're not a cure, uh, but it's a big step forward, and it's I think a sign of the future the, that hope to come in terms of new therapies. So the new therapies are exciting, but the other thing that's really exciting is the new diagnostics. So we now have and are beginning to use blood measures to help us make a more accurate, confident diagnosis yeah. and trying to, trying to um, understand how we can use these blood markers you know, in the community, in primary care to, to reach a quicker, you know, more accurate diagnosis in the community as opposed to having to get in line for the specialists, um, sure. which we know there's long waits and, um, and you know, it can be hard to access those specialists. But we think the future will be diagnosis will happen you know, in the community, in primary care, and then we can access these new drugs in a more um, you know, efficient way than yeah. we're doing it now. Exciting time for you to get up and come into work, right? Yeah, very exciting. Yeah. Good, good. Joey, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, what do you really want people to take away from our conversation? What should they know? You know, if you're looking for a place to move, if you aren't sure what to do and you want to, you know, take things into your own hands and moving your body, we are a safe place for you to come out and move. Um, come on out, we have that free assessment so you can come out and meet our staff, um, see our facility. Um, no matter where you're at, we'll find a place for you and you're always welcome here. Joey, thank you so much. Such a pleasure to have you with us and, and keep doing some great work out there. Michelle, what's the thing? Thank you. That there are options that there are things you can do, uh, that we don't give up, uh, we keep trying, and we can experiment and take brave steps even if it's something out of comfort zone, uh, that it's worth it. Thank you for the work you do with our patients and their loved ones as well. Dr. Burns, wrap us up. What's the big takeaway? Okay, well, what Michelle said. Of course. That was great. <laughs> um, but yeah, people should feel empowered that they can do some things to, to influence their risk um, to you know to some degree is it a cure no but you know take action and then the other the other thing is it's really a transformative time for alzheimer's disease in terms of the research and then the clinical care and um, we're right on the front edge i think of a lot of good good stuff happening thank you for the work you do as well all right thank you thanks to all of our guests thanks to our viewers for being with us today we'll see you back here tomorrow coming up on the morning medical update we can't just treat the cancer we have to treat the person i'm alexis del cid on the next morning medical update holistic support for people living with breast cancer meet the cosmetologist helping women regain their comfort and confidence tuesday at 8 a.m Subscribe to our morning medical update and open mics with Dr. Stites podcast. Now everywhere podcasts are available.